Hey YouTube and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be having a look at the CZ SP01 Shadow. We'll be doing a bit of an unboxing and seeing what we think of it with a little bit of help from Odie and Peanut. Now remember guys, if you like what you see here, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to get all the latest videos coming up. So keep it going. We try and upload every week, uh, but I can't guarantee when that is because sometimes you have a habit of saying it's Saturday and then it's a Monday and a Wednesday and you know the score, but pretty much every week. So without further ado, I'm going to get on with this review and unboxing and oh, I've got Daxons everywhere. So just bear with me. Okay guys, so for this unboxing, uh, welcome to what is lovingly known as my gun dungeon. Uh, which is the room of the house where I do all my fettling and, and work on my airsoft guns. Any tuning, any tech work that I want to do. And it's usually full of parts and as usual it's no different today. Bits of hop up and barrels and whatever else lurking around here. Um, my ASO2 is currently in bits. So yeah, this is uh, what is my gun dungeon if you like. So. What we're going to do is we're going to open this up and have a look and do a few first impressions and then chrono it. So this is the CZ SP01 Shadow and it's in urban grey. Now CZ, when I think of CZ I always thought of sort of slightly shonky old fashioned motorbikes uh, from the 1960s and 70s. So CZ have come to fruition through ASG very much so. Uh, with their licensed uh, SP01 obviously here, P09, the um, Scorpion. So they're sort of really in there with the uh, the CZ firearm. So let's get this open and have a bit of a look. So first of all, nice green box with a polystyrene base, not anything particularly unusual about that, but decent packaging. You get yourself a manual. It has the usual instructions, gives you a rundown of parts of the pistol, the safety, how to load a CO2 bulb, how to take the bottom of the mag off, how to load the mag, how to adjust the hop up, and what to look for the hop when, when firing. So the usual kind of thing, and notes at the back. <laughs> and it shows you the two types of, of pistol in this range, which is the uh, SP01, which is sort of a match target pistol, and the SP01 Shadow sort of urban grey, which is more of a tactical pistol with a extended barrel for a suppressor. And that's the one we've got today. So what you get in the box, so don't worry about that, it's a spare that I got when I bought a, another magazine. So you, you get a magazine, you buy a magazine, you get a spare Allen key. So in the box you get two Allen keys, one large and one small. You get box of BBs. Now this I do like, you get a set of iron sights. It's The one is a fibre optic and the other one is a standard flat sight for the rear. You get your CO2 mag, did I mention this is a CO2 pistol? This pistol actually works with CO2 or green gas, uh, you just need to put a different magazine in but it does work with both. And finally you get the gun. Wrapped up in plastic, so let's get that out. Move the box and the part and take the pistol out of the bag. Now, this is actually quite different to the PO9. So, what's different about this to the PO9? The PO9 has a polymer uh, frame, so a bit like your Glocks and your SIG and things like that. It has a, a polymer lower and then it has the aluminium top slide whereas the shadow is completely aluminium all the way through so we have an aluminium frame aluminium slide and nice rubberized grips so the first impressions when this comes out of the box is the weight this is not a light gun um, it's certainly not desert eagle territory but it's certainly not light it's got a fair bit of weight to it but one thing I will say is it fits very nicely in the hand. Your hand just sort of curls around the grip. I've got quite big hands where that makes a difference, I don't know. But yeah, it feels good. So when I first looked at this pistol, I thought, I can't decide <laughs> what it's crossed between. 
it seems to be a cross between a 911 and an M9 and they had a baby because they loved each other very much and we ended up with a CZ75 SP01 and yeah I still stand by that the one thing you do notice about this gun when you get out of the box is how low profile the top slide is so as you look at it, it's got a very deep lower frame and quite a shallow top slide and just like the real firearm and side by side to look at the real firearm you can't tell any difference so let's have a look around it so first of all we look at the grips and you've got these lovely sort of curved textured grips nice nice soft rubberized finish to them and you've also got the CZ logo there on the bottom of the grip these are fully licensed so you've got all the CZ markings you've got CZ 75 SPO one shadow 9 times 19 for the actual caliber and capacity you've got a safety you've got your slide release and you've got your sights now you may notice these sights quite tall and that's simply because they're they're extended sights to allow you to run a suppressor without the sights being obscured on the back we've got the hammer and on the other side we've got an ambidextrous safety as well down here we've got a very 1911-esque mag release this one however is extended so it sticks out quite far so you can't miss that the magazine has quite a large flare on the bottom of it so we have this quite large base the one thing i'll say about this is it moves around a lot i don't like that i, I can't stand that but you know it's a shame i may have to put something in there just to stop the irritation of it moving around so i may put uh, a bit of velcro or some felt inside the mag just to try and stop it wobbling around quite so much so if we cock this pull it back nice solid return not the fastest snappiest return i've ever seen but certainly nothing wrong with it yeah fine Trigger feels light, feels nice. So trigger pull. So it's not as snappy as something like that Mark, the Sig Sauer Mark 17 I've got, but certainly nothing wrong with it. So yeah, a little bit spongy, not as, as crisp as I'd like, but if you get the match version of this, the, the competition version of it, that's far snappier. So you can actually make a lot of difference with that. So whereas that has a, it doesn't have a double action trigger, that only has a single action trigger on the match one but what you get for it is a much snappier pull whereas this has still got the double action so on the end we've got a 14 millimeter counterclockwise adapter to fit suppressor now one thing i'll say about this the threads are deep and they're really nicely done very often on airsoft guns you you'll look at the threads on the end for the adapter if it will focus will you focus please but on these they're really nice deep clean threads that's quite impressive and you can feel it when you when you put the the little protection the little protection thing on the front it actually feels nice and it just goes on well tightens down and you think yeah okay that feels a nice quality thread and that's something not to overlook it sounds boring but something not to overlook in airsoft gun sometimes it can be cheap and nasty now when i first saw a picture of this in urban gray i thought no i do not want that but then when i saw it in real life i was actually quite surprised now there were three guns i was looking at to actually review uh, i got this from wolf armories uh, in london i was down there for the weekend and i popped in and had a look around really friendly guys you know great shop i certainly recommend going there and the guns I was looking at were this, the P09, the other version of the Shadow, so like the, the target version, and also a Hudson. Um, now the Hudson, I hated if I'm honest, it felt too small in my hand, it felt like a toy, it was really small, not really didn't suit me at all. Um, it was fun to look at and it was fun to sort of mess with, but I couldn't see myself skirmishing it. The P09 felt a lot lighter than this, didn't feel as, as robust as this, and this just felt nice in the hand. So this is what I came away with. Now these guns retail roughly around the £130, £140 mark. So they're not the cheapest compared to the P09, but they're also really good value for money and they feel really solid and sturdy. So let's take this down, 
To do that, you have two marks at the back here, you push them up, line them up, and you push this slide out from the back, just like a 1911. Pull this through. So, what can we see on the inside? So, if we have a look, nice and clean sort of casting. Pretty standard kind of fare I'd expect for the inside of a, a sub 200 pistol or sub sort of 150 pound pistol. So, yeah, nothing too unusual. Tight little gun. Reliability wise, I'm not sure yet. There seems to be a mixture of pop metal and hardened metal. So, we just have to see. Time will tell with that one. Now, with the slide, the top slide, again, quite, uh, quite a Filled in back here, <laughs> absolutely, there's absolutely no room in the back here, that's completely filled in. And then we've got our hop adjustment here, which is done with the use of either a flat blade screwdriver, or if you can get your hands in there, or you get your nails in there. Mm, now, I wouldn't go as far to say you can adjust it in the field with your fingers. Um, you've got your front spring here, which is held in place by a small notch on there. And then you've got your metal outer barrel and brass inner barrel. Help compatibility, I haven't got that far to see what we can put in this gun to try and, try and upgrade it. So whether it be tight ball barrels or, or hot rubbers like an Autobot, something like that. But I'm not going to do that yet because I like to see whether a gun's robust first before I spend money on it in case it breaks in the first couple of games. So it's always nice to know. But so far, of what I've seen on the internet, these get quite good reviews. So this particular one I've got, as I said, I've got it with CO2 mags. Uh, the reason for that is winter's coming. And very often, gas guns don't like winter, so they get upset. So I'm going to use this through the winter and see how we get on. So what we'll do now, now I've had a look at it, and had a, a bit of a look around it. We'll get the chrono out, do a chrono test, and see how, how we get off. So what you do to fit the magazine, is you pull this tab back down here, pull it back towards you, and you can slide that off the end. And then you have your hex key in the end there to remove the base of the magazine. Then you get your CO2 ball, drop it in like so. Tighten this back up until you find a, feel a resistance. And you literally twist it on. That's all you have to do. No leaks, can't hear anything. So for me, that's good to go. You can always tell because that's really hard to push down once it's uh, in a dry so you know when it's it's ready to go. So now to put it back together, all you do is you pull the tab back again, see a little notch there, pull it back and drop the slide back on, release it, and it's back in place. So we'll get this loaded, do that, same as any other mag, pull it back if you can, and just load the BBs in here double stacked. So the BBs are loaded. I'm using Neuprol 0.2 gram BBs. I buy these simply for testing my guns uh, when I've done any modifications or anything like that just to get FPS readings when I'm doing um, doing any kind of uh, modifications. I don't actually use them out in the uh, field so I use heavier BBs and different grades. So. Here we go, let's try this out. So this is a brand new CO2 ball. Three, three, three. 340, one for good luck, 337. Let's just finish this off. And it locks back. I don't see. That is a nice kick. It's solid. It's actually quite hard kick. Being CO2, I guess I wouldn't expect any more. Um, 
but hey, it feels good to me. So as you can see, 337 upwards, uh, 340 on a few of them. It's pretty, pretty, you know, strong kick to it. It's got a, a strong FPS and it's only just inside the, the sort of legal limits of the UK uh, sites. But really, that's exactly where you want it because you want to get the most out of every gun you get. So, so far, so good. So let's talk about the build quality of this pistol. Looking at it. Give it a wobble test. It does make a bit of noise when you wobble it. A lot of that's down to the magazine, to be honest. Um, there's a tiny bit of movement in the top slide. Nothing too excessive. You'll notice with this, the actual top side sits inside the lower frame. So you can't actually see any light through it, even if you moved it. So it's not like you can sort of see a great gap between the slide and the bottom frame. But there's a little bit of movement. Um, the slide's pretty pretty chunky, pretty heavy. I haven't done anything to this. It might benefit from a bit of lubrication, maybe, just make it slide a little easier. Uh, when it's in the cock position, you've got your safety, your ambidextrous safety, which is nice, feels good, nice solid click. And with the mag release here as well, these are all aluminium, so it's good quality. It helps to give that feel of quality. Same here, this is all aluminium. It all feels good, it all feels solid, and like I say, the inner barrel's actually uh, made of aluminium as well, so that's quite nice. So no plastic, or say inner barrel, outer barrel inside the pistol, it's all made of, of aluminium, so it all feels really good, it feels really solid, and it's actually a, a nice gun to hold. It's, one of the, it's a very comfortable gun to hold. So, at the end of the day, I actually really like this, I think it's a nice gun. I know I say that a lot about most of the guns I buy, but that's because I buy guns I like. So I'm not going to buy guns I don't like because that would be stupid because I have to pay for them. So if people start supplying me with guns that I don't have to pay for, then I can say what I like about them because they they could be anything. But with, with the guns I get now, I do like them. I think they're good. I like the fact you can change sights. You can put uh, a fibre optic on the front or you can change the rear sights um, from these sort of tactical um, suppressor sites and you can go back to sort of a, a match shooting sort of competition site with um, with the fibre optic on there. I like the the style of the trigger guard. I like the fact it's got a sort of a big indentation here. So if you're wearing thick gloves, you can still get your finger in. There's no, no problems there. And you've got the grip on the front of the trigger guard so you can get a good hold of it. Um, I like the feel of it. I like it. I like the weight of it. So yeah, so far I think I think it's pretty good, and you can see a bit of mag wobble at the back there, the other side. But really, it's nothing to worry about. It really isn't anything to worry about at all. I'm just sort of picking up on it more than anything. Um, I love these rubberized grips. One thing you can do with these pistols is customize customize them quite a lot. Um, you can go on the internet and you can buy these different grips to go on here. You can buy really fancy stuff. You can buy aluminium grips. You can buy different colored triggers, different colored. Um, sort of slide release and 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 safety. So you can actually do quite a lot of these, lots of these if you want to make them look quite different. Uh, the slides can be interchangeable. So if you wanted a black slide on here, you could possibly get one off a, off a match pistol, off the match style pistol. So there's lots you can do to these for interchanging. Uh, and it's really good, it's really nice. Like I say, one thing to consider is it is quite weighty. It's not the lightest gun in the world, but you know, who cares? It's nice to feel something solid. Uh, it's better than having a plasticky sort of gun that feels like a toy. It's like nice to feel something that feels real. So yeah, good impression so far. Uh, I think the true tell, I've got a whining dog next to me. The real tell with this will be once we get out in the field and start playing with it and we get rid of these stickers. Oh, come on. I mean, we don't need to see this, do we? Seriously, come on, go away. Oh, come on. Oh, and it's left, the, oh, it's left the sticky stuff on there. Great, thanks for that. So now I've got to get that off. Now the dog's climbing up my leg and rocking the camera, and that's not good. Come here. So, yeah, right. I'm, I'm going to end this bit, because it's just getting silly now. Right then, so what we'll do, as usual, I'll talk about where you, how you can carry this thing. So we talk about holsters. Now, if you've got something like this, which is like a, a Viper or a, a standard sort of uh, material called your holster, this is where the DNA of the 1911, so when I said that it was a little bit like a 1911 had a baby with a, an M9, this is one of the characteristics you'll notice. Do not put it in one of these magazines, because if you do, you can wave goodbye to your magazine. 
The simple fact is, as you push it in, it presses down on the magazine release, which is in exactly the same place as the one in 1911, and it'll go bye bye. So, magazine not love you long time. On the other hand, we've got our trusty wire assault systems universal holster. We can put it in there. Come on now, in you go. I know it fits. And you can lock it in place, and that's not going anywhere, it's holding it tight. So I love, <laughs> anyone who's seen any of my other videos will know I love these things. Uh, the Warrior Assault Systems Universal Holster is fantastic and holds more guns than it doesn't. But there's one thing with this that you've got to consider. So when you draw it, oh, it doesn't come out. And the reason for that is we've got our raised sights. You pull it back and it catches on the inside. So you end up having to release it and wiggle it and release it a bit more. Come on, to get it out. There we go. Not the most tactical uh, draw of a sidearm. So with that said, you've got to consider that. Now, I think if you have the fiber optic on it, it won't be nearly as, as dramatic as that. Um, and it's a shame because that would work with uh, a suppressor as well, but it's just not going to get past those sides. So that is something to consider. Now, personally, I would probably recommend getting a Kydex holster for this. Um, if it can be made to manage with the, the higher sights as well, then it gives you a fighting chance. Uh, that's probably what I'll be doing. I recently got a uh, Kydex holster for my TRMR grenade. Uh, I got it from uh, Kydex Customs in South Wales. Uh, great job, really pleased with it. So I'll probably do the same for this and, and get a holster from them. So all in all, I'm really pleased with this. There are a little, few little things that you've got to consider before you run it because it may not be as straightforward as you think as a swap if you're running a Glock or um, an M9 or something like that at the moment. It may not just be a case of swapping it out into your current holster and running off into the gameplay. You may have to do a few more things just to make sure it works with your loadout uh, because it's not a straight swap. Um, would I recommend it? Definitely. Uh, from what I've seen so far, I think it's excellent value for money. Um, it's not really that expensive. I've heard from other reports that it's very reliable, that it's accurate. So, so, so remember guys, if you like the video, uh, remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Uh, stay tuned for more content and we'll see you again soon.